you're a drug drinking, you're in a pub, it's a Saturday night, you've got comedy, live in the dream. Live in the dream, by the way. Not talking about dreams. No one cares. Right? Before you start, I mean, you two together. So you'll have, you'll have had the conversation, the whole, someone will say it to you. I had a really funny dream last night, and you have to say something back to them, you know, you, you want to say something really clever, like, I don't give a shit. <laughs> well, you don't just say something stupid, like, tell me about it, in detail, and don't be cutting out any details, mate, they want to hear every single little thing, and they will, but once you yeah, spiel, like, some sur surreal nonsense, oh, you know, I was in this club, right? I'd never been in the club before, but I recognised the club, you know that thing? And we were there, and you were there, you were dressed like a nun, which I thought was kind of strange, I've never seen you wear that particular outfit before. And you were over at the bar, you walked over the bar, the bar was shaped like the Titanic, it was strange, all the little stools were shaped like lifeboats. And you paired yourself up in one of the little lifeboats, and you were being served by a scale model of Kilmarnock, which I thought was a rather strange choice for staff. And then you came back, we're all dancing about, you know, those cake, the banjos are playing, the bubbles are rising, and I turned around and there's Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt's standing right behind me. Well, it wasn't Brad Pitt, it was a dolphin wearing a fed, but I knew it was Brad Pitt. He said to his jumper. And Brad Pitt turns to me and Brad Pitt says, you know what, I just don't like Swedish people. And he wouldn't say that, would he? Brad Pitt wouldn't say that. That's how I knew it was a dream. <laughs> what do you think that means? <laughs> and again, you want to say something clever, like, I don't give a shit. But you don't, you find yourself saying something incredibly stupid, like, let's go look it up. Next thing you know, you're on Amazon, looking up how to interpret dreams by a twat. <laughs> Can people who also bought this book also purchased the bumper book of horseshit, volume two. Anyway, right, I'll tell you a bit about myself, no, no, the surrealism is over. I quite like this place. Anyway, that's beside that. Um, my name's Derek, uh, I'm from Glasgow. Hey. I, like <laughs> hey. I like that little pause though when I say I'm from Glasgow, is where everyone just checks each other, wallets are still there. Because uh, there is a kind of rivalry between Edinburgh and Glasgow which I kind of find funny because in the grand scale of things, look at the size of the planet, we're practically the same place. And but I think it's the way we see each other. Like everyone here thinks that everyone in Glasgow are crazy, insane, alcoholic, snobby people. Which is only a wee bit true, I mean, I'm not an alcoholic. But everyone in Glasgow <laughs> thinks that everyone in Edinburgh are a bunch of pims, drinking, couscous eating, top hat and monocle wearing tops. And I'm going to have to admit, when I came here eight years ago, I was a little naive student, came here, and I thought that. Then I got on a Lothian bus. <laughs> <laughs> and you'd, you'd see all on that bus, right? The first time I got on, right, eight years ago, I get to up, and there's your bus driver, proper bus driver, those big chunky guys that looks like they just sat in a chair and someone built a bus around <laughs> And he's sitting there, so he pays my money, and goes up the stairs. Sits down, empty, top deck empty, there's nothing nice here. So I'm sitting there, and a guy gets on with his daughter, little, I'm going to guess about five or six. So he walks on with her, and they sit down right in front of me, so the bus is rolling along there, and we pass the yeah, Sotton Prison, uh, out there in the west, and um, the man points at the prison, he goes, look, there's a prison. Do you know what a prison is? And she's fine, she's no stupid. She went, I know what a prison is. That's where Uncle Frank went because he borrowed that man's car. <laughs> I didn't hear his response, I thought, I'm dying, I'm getting old. <laughs> so you can forgive her, she's five. You know, five year olds are supposed to be stupid. You know, they say stupid things all the time. But I like, I like being an adult and adult people say stupid things. Because let's say, you've all got a group of friends you've all got a stupid one in that group. If you don't, it's you. <laughs> I just hate to break it to you. But I think I've talked it. I don't think anyone can beat the stupidest thing I've ever heard. I mean, if, if you can beat this, feel free to come and tell me. I'm willing to learn here. But I was in America. Where else? Um, is there an American in? Good. Uh, we're all right. Um, so I was in America. Chicago, seven hour flight, I'm not going to be arsed with anything. And I'm at the carousel thing, 
I have no bags. I had bags. I have no bags now. I am man with bags minus just one. No luggage. Lost luggage, please. I think I know how to fix this. I went over to the lost luggage, please. There's a woman behind the counter, right? Please deserve. There's a woman behind this counter. I don't want to be mean. But she was the kind of woman who would describe herself as bubbly. <laughs> she, she, you know, and it's well, not British fat. We're talking American fat. She was, she's, yeah, I'm, I'm not exaggerating, but she was the same size, weight, and shape as a Ford Escort. <laughs> and she, she was on a swivel chair and she turned around and it was like the opening of a film by Universal Pictures. <laughs> <laughs> and she looked at me and she says, Hi, how can I help you? I thought, no time for sarcasm. I want to I said, you've lost the luggage. And she looked me right in the eye and she said five words that are going to be with me until the day I die. And she said, has your plane landed yet? <laughs> <laughs> so I ran through my brain, so I was like, I was in the air. <laughs> I wasn't. There must have been a point where a landing scenario has happened. And then I thought I took a gamble. I thought, fuck it, I said yes. And she went, oh, here's a form. And she left out of that. And see, from that day, then I've been wondering, what would have happened if I said no? <laughs> or maybe it was all just a funny dream I had. Anyway, that's all for me. Thanks very much. Enjoy the rest of the